A Tale of Two Disneys. No, it's not Disney's latest attempt at Dickens, but it is a pondering of mine. I grew up during the Disney Renaissance, which, if truth be told, was more of an animation renaissance. And for most of my childhood, I've wondered what exactly makes a Disney movie a Disney movie. When I muttered this out loud a while back, a Disney theme park employee informed me that a Disney film must have been produced or distributed by Disney to be considered a Disney film. But recently I've come to realize this view is a bit too strict. There has to be a reason that films like The Prince of Egypt and Anastasia are constantly confused with Disney animated classics, while The Black Cauldron is mostly forgotten. So I started applying genre theory to the Disney catalog, and what I found is that the films mostly fall into Shat's hierarchy of genre. Experimental, classical, refined, and more recently Baroque. Tropes, or the rules that govern a genre, have begun to develop, specifically in style, character, and theme. Style. From a style standpoint, it has to be animated, at least in part, and it has to have music that affects the plot or characters. An angry tantrum if he cannot have his way. He calls for mom and sucks his thumb and doesn't want... These may seem a bit obvious, but just looking at the types of films released can very easily lead from Snow White to Mary Poppins, and from Mary Poppins to the Swiss Family Robinson, and from there eventually to Pirates of the Caribbean, which doesn't have any animation or music that affects the character and plot. While Mary Poppins can be included, the Swiss Family Robinson and certainly Pirates of the Caribbean cannot. Character. There seem to be about three different leading characters that Disney likes to work with. The leading male, the leading female, and the child. The leading male in Disney's animated catalog starts with Robin Hood. It then carries through the Beast, who still has to split time with Belle, but is infinitely more realized than the princes of Snow White and Cinderella, and then finally reaches its full realization with Tarzan, where the title character has become the sole protagonist, and Jane has to play second fiddle to him. The leading female has permeated the culture with the Disney princesses, this type starts with Snow White, the first animated feature at Disney, and carries all the way up to Elsa and Anna in Frozen, the most recent Disney animated feature. But the leading female has also seen the most change as the genre has evolved. Whereas Snow White is basically a damsel in distress, Frozen clearly subverts this stereotype. The final leading character type is the child, usually a boy, though the argument can be made for Wendy's inclusion. This type comes to prominence early on and predates the leading male. While this type could be assumed to be a proto-leading male, it seems to have simply become less prominent, though Hero of Big Hero 6 seems like Disney's latest foray into this character type. The fourth character type worth noting, though not leading, is the villain. Disney has had a long history of creating strong villains, and while they are all different and don't quite condense down as well, a strong, fully realized, specific villain is still a necessary feature. Theme. Theme is more nuanced than style and character. Each film feels like it has a very specific theme inherent to its own particular story. But painting with a really broad brush, Thematically, Disney movies seem to focus on love. It sounds cliche, but if all the stories are really distilled down to their essence, what's left is either familial love, romantic love, or friendly love. With these tropes in mind, let's shift back to The Prince of Egypt, Anastasia, and The Black Cauldron. Both The Prince of Egypt and Anastasia are animated musicals, but while The Black Cauldron is animated, it lacks memorable music that affects plot and character. As far as leading characters are concerned, all three types are represented here. Moses falls into the leading male category, Anastasia the leading female, somewhere between Snow White and Elsa and Anna. She's not quite a damsel in distress, but she doesn't subvert the stereotype either. And finally, Taryn fits into our child type. 
When it comes to villains, this is where the Black Cauldron falters. While the design of the Horn King is impressive, he lacks both immediacy and specificity. It seems his henchmen do a lot of the dirty work, and he doesn't feel specific to Terran's story. He feels generic. Ramses and Rasputin, on the other hand, are both immediate and specific. Because of his relationship to Moses, Ramses becomes an obstacle that can only be confronted by Moses. Rasputin, again, is specific to Anastasia. Rasputin is seeking revenge on the Romanov family. Anastasia, being the only surviving member of the Romanovs, is the only person that Rasputin can confront. By the time Gurgi is resurrected, the Black Cauldron has finally settled on a theme of friendly love. But it's a convoluted journey to get there. By contrast, both the Prince of Egypt and Anastasia are about familial love, pretty much from the start. We know that Moses will be confronted with the choice between his birth family and his adopted family within the opening scene. And Anastasia's story is handled much the same way. We know when the Romanovs die what the theme is going to be. The reason the Prince of Egypt and Anastasia are so often mistaken for Disney animated films is because they better fit the genre tropes Disney has established than some of Disney's own films, case in point, The Black Cauldron. Titling an entire genre the Disney genre may prove problematic, however. Other studios have obviously followed the same tropes. Something as broad as the animation genre won't do either. That'd be the equivalent of a live action genre. The most accurate title is probably some form of animated musical genre, but regardless of the name, Disney has most certainly created a genre for its animation department, and they are the most successful when their films stay within that genre. So this is the first video I think I've posted in six weeks. I've been on an unexpected and unappreciated hiatus. I had car trouble and then computer trouble. The computer trouble has mostly been resolved and the car is being resolved. While I'm fixing the car, I'm going to be slowing down the pace from two videos a week probably to one. Once that gets fixed, we'll ramp right back up. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe.